Hey guys, welcome back to Kristen Live Acres. In today's video, I am going to go over what is in my bug out bag. If you're not familiar with the term, um, it's also referred to as a BOB. And basically, it's an emergency minimum of three day supply if you're not able to stay at the location you're at. I always say, if any way possible, stay in your house and bug in. But there are certain circumstances where you cannot stay. So it's always good to have a bag ready to go just grab and go. It can be in your car, in your house, wherever. So whether you're going to a shelter, you're going out in the woods, you're just getting away from the situation you're in, whatever that might be, this is the perfect essential item. This is a, this bag is by Monarchy, which means a freedom lover, a joyful, outgoing person that's hardworking. So I think that's pretty cool that the brand is, you know, referred to by that name. So this bag is a very lightweight bag, great for a three-day pack. It's got all kinds of awesome compartments. It comes with a couple bonus goodies that I'll show you as we go through the bag, but um, I'll just go ahead and show you what it looks like on. mid-July summer in Florida is hot all right so it has the optional adjustable chest strap and the optional adjustable waist strap I've got mine in a pretty tight secure kind of spot here you can loosen tighten it as you need but if you have these both on what it does is help support your back so you're going to be standing straight up instead of kind of leaning back or leaning forward and it's going to take some of the pressure off your shoulders and kind of even out the weight so this is what it looks like just on me i am five five and a half yes that half matters and 108 pounds uh it's recommended that you don't carry over one quarter of your body weight. So at 108 pounds, my maximum carry recommended is 27 pounds. As I have this bag packed currently, it's at 20 pounds, including the bag total. Now I don't have water in my water canteen that I'll show you. And my Glock 19 firearm and ammunition is coming in tomorrow. And uh, I was just waiting on the background check. And I'm also working on my concealed carry permit. So, um, I also got a paracord bracelet that has a compass and a fire starter, which I'll be wearing on my wrist. It's super lightweight. And then um, a Florida map. I had a hard time finding one that really showed, like, you know, geographical land masses and waterways and that kind of thing. But finally found one. It's laminated so it won't rip or get, you know, destroyed during bad weather. Those are the only things that I'm adding to this. And I want to say to be very conservative, well, at most it's going to weigh 25 pounds, so I'm still clearly under the required recommended weight that I carry. So it feels really good. It's got like triple padded shoulders, um, double sewn reinforced where the um, straps attached to the bag. These straps are not uncomfortable at all, even though I'm sweating hot. And, oh, before I take this off, I want to show you something else. So these are some accessories I've added to it. I've put this on one of those rip cords. This is pepper spray. Now, I'm a female, and yes, I am going to be packing heat, as we like to say in the South. However, if you can't quite get to it in time or maybe it's just an animal or something that is obstructing you from getting where you need to be at least you could blind it for a minute to five minutes this is a police grade again I'll link all this stuff below but it's easy just to pull out it's right here at my grip another thing that I have that I meant to put on this cord but it's a little bit heavy for that but all I have to do is this and it's a, it's a flashlight, 
And the cool thing is, is that people won't know what it actually is because although it is a flashlight, it's also a stun gun. So all you have to do is turn it up and push. That ought to do it till you can get your firearm out. Uh, it's just always good to have backup. What if you run out of ammunition or, you know, there's so many different things that can happen. It's always good to have several items right at hand. My pistol will be around my waist. However, I've got three items that I can grab quickly in case of emergency. So this just slides back in here. All right. I also have another uh, rip cord that has a high decibel whistle for uh, communication. So if you're in a dangerous situation or you're trying to get a message to somebody or you can hear people, but maybe they can't hear your voice, maybe you're injured, you can just blow this. I have two of them. One of them is on my kid's survival backpack, which I'll probably make a video in the future about, but um, I'll just to give you an idea. Sorry, I should have warned you to turn the volume down before I did that. And then I also just have a backup little mini light if I don't want to draw a lot of attention to myself, but I kind of need to see what where I'm going. But I don't want the whole, you know, campsite I've set up to be lit up. All right, so let's take this off so I don't die of heat stroke. All right. So one of the things this came with was a mini paracord with several carabiners. And it came with um, this Velcro spot, and it came with these two patches. I have some more patches on the way that I ordered, just small ones. And um, it also came with a mini multi-tool, multi-purpose survival card, but it's like in the size of a credit card, which is pretty cool. I also have a larger one that I'll show you, but um, I really like that it had some bonuses because it was a good deal and then to get those extras was pretty cool it also came with a carry bag uh plus like an extra one that you could attach to the outside if you happen to pick up something or you maybe you have damp clothes and you want to hang them and it can still get air flowing through there so it doesn't make the rest of your backpack wet and smelly all right so next we're just going to go ahead and open this puppy up and i'll show you what's inside first pocket i'm going to show you is the smallest one where these pouches are located which is really cool because you know you can put whatever you want on there i ordered a um a u.s navy patch because i am former navy military and i ordered a gadsden flag or it might just say don't tread on me but you know so this first small pocket i've got some leather gloves i need some new ones these were my daddy's and i just can't get rid of them but they're starting to get pretty worn these are great for all kinds of things gathering wood moving brush out of your way picking up something hot they're I mean irreplaceable you need a good pair of leather gloves so another couple things that I would might more quick access to would be some rope some zip ties multi-purpose tool okay. and the other thing I have in this little pocket is an extra bag which like I said it's always nice this is the one that came with this backpack and it's always nice to have a little something extra if you need to hang it from wherever um, you know, it's always better to start with more and everything you think you might need and then if it gets to be too much and it, you realize you didn't need it or there's you know too much weight in your bag you can always leave it behind um, and maybe at a later time if it was something you really wanted to keep you could go back and get it you just need to hide it somewhere or you may just drop it and be like that was useless I shouldn't have packed it all right let me undo these <coughs> excuse me undo these okay <clears throat> the next pocket is here and this has my uh, waterproof mini first aid kit which I'll go over and then this is toiletries so I've got some Kleenex in here I've got a bunch of high absorbency toilet paper which is from um, a military bag I've got lots of MREs some moist towelettes lens cleaners you want to bring either safety glasses or sunglasses with you. 
the only problem with sunglasses is obviously you're not going to be able to wear them at night, but you know, you, you may not need to. It just depends on the situation. I've got some hand sanitizer and a mini palm olive soap and then some more sanitary products. So like bar soap, more toilet paper, a moist towelette, and a mini toothbrush and toothpaste. I think I said in toilet paper, but anyway, this is one thing you could just grab and kind of like, you know, go behind a few trees and take care of business. So those are all good things to have like right at hand. I also have a Sharpie in here. And then below in this other pocket, I have two flashlights and they both take three triple A's. So this is eight batteries here. So that's a backup for each. And then if you can get a little bit out of maybe one or two of the other ones, you could probably get three uses, which these are supposed to last for 24 hours, not continuous use, but with moderate use. So I've got those right there because you don't want to be searching around at night for your flashlights. But if you know exactly where they are tucked away in a waterproof bag, you're good to go. Okay, so that is that pocket. And the next one actually opens all the way. And it's got pockets in here I haven't even used yet. So I've got my mini camp pot, which you can boil water in, you can cook food in. I mean, there's so many uses. And the nice thing is, is this folds down and you can hang like a carabiner or a rope from a tree over the fire. So it's not <coughs> sitting directly on the fire. Otherwise you might burn your food, whether you are hunting and you killed something or you're just heating up a meal ready to eat or whatever it is. Okay, below that, and actually what I did is you always want to try to pack as compact as you can. So I just moved the stuff around till it fit and I shoved it in here. And that way it's not taking up any more room than it would have originally. All right, so in this bag are some of my tools. I've got another uh, budgie cord, some zip ties, and I chose these particular zip ties because they are the uh, tie wrap, T-Y wrap. I don't know if I can get this back in here. Um, and they are reusable. So even though they tighten down really well, they also can come undone. It depends on how you use them. If you use them the way you use a regular zip tie, you're not getting it off unless you cut it. However, if you, like I did here, but if you see here, I'll take one of these and I'm gonna put it, if you put it through this direction, which normal zip ties don't have the ability to do that, still has this lockdown mechanism and it's got these little ridges so it won't pull and fall apart. I didn't pull it all the way because I've got these all banded together like I want them, but um, these are really great because once you run out, then you're out. But you know, if you can undo them and reuse them, that's always good. All right, I've got some uh, mantles, which I do not pack a lantern with me, or at least this bag, I do not have one in it, but they're great for fire starters. A mini funnel, several mini trash bags, so almost like the size of like your doggy poop bags, but they're for like, they're between the size of a small bathroom trash bag and a poop bag. So when you, if you are trying to be discreet and you don't want people to be able to kind of follow where your trail is or where you're going, you could dig a hole, you know use the restroom in this, tie it up, cover it back up with some leaves and whatnot. And um, the animals, it'll take them a little longer to find it and smell it too. I've got one of these Libman microfiber cloths. It actually opens up to about a 15 by 15 and they dry out super quickly. So once it's wet, if you need to keep moving, you can just attach it to something out here and let it just flee, free flow dry. I've got some safety goggles. And that's it for that particular bag. I like to keep things kind of organized in certain bags so that when I'm looking for something, I don't have to dump out my whole bag and it's dark out and you can't see what you're doing. Okay, so another great item would be a ham radio. I've got my double bag. 
and without using a large freezer bag, all I did was unscrew my antenna, and when you're ready to use it, you just screw it back in, turn it on, you're good to go. This is a Bao Feng, and they are excellent. They're very reasonably priced, and you cannot broadcast with this without the proper license, but you can listen. However, there is, if it's an emergency, there's a caveat to that. In a true emergency, you can broadcast for help. And you can scan through the channels no matter where you're at and find a local channel or you can broadcast to somebody and transmit and you know try to give them your coordinates and get some help or a way out. Next up is going to be your water filtration system. I have two in here. I've got the Sawyer Squeeze, which is this filter here that's connected to this pouch. For less than $25 on Amazon, it comes with two of these pouches. They're 32 ounces each. And you basically just screw this on, and then it comes with either a straw attachment, which goes on like so. go <clears throat> or it comes with a sports cap lid which is here and you just pop this off like you would a sports drink open it and it's leak proof and you're good to go okay so the next item that's a little bit cheaper I believe it's about $15 or so and it is a life straw And this is just as simple as it sounds. You literally just pop the top here. It has a bottom you open. It's got a double filter inside. You just suck on it, bring the water in, and it filtrates it through. So it just depends on, um, this is more of a short-term thing in the Sawyer squeeze, not many, is uh, gonna give you more bang for the buck if you're trying to plan for possibly a longer bug out situation. I've got a notepad with some Sharpies, pencil, pen, in a plastic bag in case you need to write notes to yourself, coordinates, leave a note on a tree. You can always wrap it in duct tape so it doesn't get wet or get ruined. There is something called Write on Rain, special paper that's weatherproof and pens that actually Will write even upside down and in the water it can tend to be pricey it's like seven dollars for the notebook and like twelve dollars for the pen so this is stuff I already had laying around my house so that's what I've got for now then I've got liquid stitch which is great for mending pretty much anything so if you have a tent sleeping bag hammock bug net your bag gets a tear a piece of your clothing it's a great handy thing to have of course, we have chem lights, or better known as glow sticks, and a 72-hour bug away bracelet. It works fairly decent. It's better than having nothing, and it's super lightweight. I don't even know if it weighs like half an ounce. I mean, it's just like nothing, like a feather. Or you could choose to carry a heavier bottle, but the more you pack, the more you're gonna have to tote. I've got an emergency blanket, the solar kind that heats up in the sun. Oh my goodness. A large carabiner, which is great for securing all kinds of things, hanging anything you need to hang, maybe from a larger piece of rope or a tree limb. And then I've got the multi-tool, like credit card size dealio that could actually fit in your back pocket. They call it a survival card. And it's got multiple size fishing hooks, an emergency rain poncho, a little mini spear, several different serrated knives, things to undo, like um, screws, nails, you name it. I mean, you can look it up. I think it's called like a 12-in-1 tool, and it's so tiny and lightweight. All right, put all this back in here. when you have it organized
organized in separate bags, it's a little bit easier to repack and not everything is just falling out on you, especially like if it's dark out. You might not even know if you lose something, so you want to be careful about that. Okay, so I'm going to strap these bottoms together. I'm not packing it as well as I had it packed earlier, but I don't want this video to be an hour long. Okay, I have a couple of extra, they're actually chip clips, but I just kind of randomly put them throughout the bag in case you need to hang like wet clothes, towels, whatever, um, instead of having to use the carabiners or your rope, you want to save that for more important things, more heavy duty things. Okay. And the third and final main compartment. In the largest part of the bag, I have an extra t-shirt, just kind of a plain, so it blends in. A pair of black leggings, a mosquito net, which comes with these little tie downs. They have screws and um, the anchors and some cordage so you can kind of like attach it to whatever it is that you're hunkering down in. I've got extra panties, bra, a pair of wool socks, and a pair of athletic socks. Just in case, you never know when you grab your bug out bag what you're going to be wearing. So you want to make sure you have everything you need. This is my water canteen, so it's always good to start out with some water because you don't know when you're going to reach a water source. I do want to purchase a stainless steel, some kind of cup, container to store water in as well. They are kind of heavy. You don't want to get a double walled or an insulated one because you're not going to be able to put it over a fire. But I did show you that pan earlier where I can boil water. So this is just super lightweight, compact, and like I said, it's not full of water because um, the water is just going to get stale. So instead of a tent, because I am in Florida, so I would say 85% of the time it's hot. It doesn't get cold enough 11 months out of the year to require a sleeping bag or a tent. So I have this hammock. It comes with the proper rope and carabiners to tie it to any tree or you know if you can find wood around or anything to attach it to then at least you'll be comfortable not sleeping on the ground away from most bugs snakes that kind of thing and then I would wrap the mosquito net around it and secure it underneath me just for comfort because there's a lot of bugs here in Florida I also have some duct tape and I've seen some people do some cool stuff with this. They've wrapped it around things and, and somehow they've done it without losing its stick. I'm not really sure. So I just flattened mine, kept it in the seal. It doesn't weigh much. It's just, um, it's 50 yards, but I mean, I just threw it in here. I've got my fire starter kit, which includes three matches. I mean, I'm sorry, two lighters, box matches, two waterproof matches some um, kind of like kindling they're called tumbleweed starters which is just super really dried out thin pieces of wood and cotton balls because cotton balls light really well and some people have even said if you put a little bit of petroleum jelly on just one end so like Vaseline that it will slow down the burn so that you can get the wood to catch fire before it goes out so I thought that was pretty cool pretty handy tip this is 25 sheets of pre-cut foil that I purchased like this for $1 at the dollar aisle in the Dollar General store. And this is great for wrapping your food, cooking, wrapping leftovers. I mean, there's so many uses. So, a reflective device, can't go wrong and it hardly weighs anything. All right, so, did I forget? Oh no. Last but not least is food. Like I said, um, I am former military. My family is pretty much all military, so I do have access to several MREs, but a lot of the meals are pretty heavy. And since I'm a petite girl, I can't carry a lot of weight. So I chose uh, two of the cracker packages, which contain two large crackers. Each container 
two little crackers has uh, 50, yeah, 58 grams of carbs and 8 grams of sugar. Just the two crackers, and I have two packs of those. I also have a caramel apple ranger bar, which has 2 grams of protein, but 28 grams of carbohydrates, so a great snack. A package of smoked almonds, which is four grams of protein and four grams of carbs. It weighs 0.67 ounces. You definitely want some snacks in between meals because your meals are going to be much further and farther between than they probably usually are on a daily basis. I have two Jack Link's beef sticks. Just a good snack. It's going to give you that extra salt you need. It's got five grams of protein per stick and uh, two grams of carbs, but it's got 10 grams of fat. So got to keep some energy up. This is another MRE item. This is wheat snack bread. It has eight grams of protein and 28 grams of carbs and some fiber. All right. Now, this might seem silly, but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of comfort food. So this particular Knorr rice with broccoli was $1, and it has, let's see, two and a half servings. So it has almost 20 grams of protein in this whole package, uh, like 150 carbohydrates, and six grams of fat. And, you know, I mean... You can make this last. You make it in your small pot. You can feed yourself and a couple other people and um, make a meal out of it. Then I've got the small packages of extra virgin olive oil, yellowfin tuna by Starkist. These were actually on clearance at my local Winn-Dixie for 90 cents a pack. I got more than this, but I wouldn't probably put more than three of these in my bag. Eventually, you're going to get sick of it. But you could spread this on those crackers, on the bread, eat it just out of the container with a fork. And each of these has 14 grams of protein, 2 grams of carbohydrates, and 9 grams of fat. So that's a, a good all-around meal. I also have a package of cheese spread for the crackers or on your toast or whatever you want it for, a package of peanut butter for protein and fat, some forks, knives, mayonnaise, a little thing of mild hot sauce, soy sauce, just to give you a little extra flavor for something, just, you know, so it's not the same every day. I also put in a can of chicken breast in water that's already fully cooked, and it has Three grams of fat, uh, no carbs, but it has 23 grams of protein. You could probably get two meals out of this, especially if you put a little bit on that bread with, you know, some kind of sauce or something. And at the Dollar General, or maybe the Dollar Store, I don't know, but um, you can get this double pack of pepperoni. I think there's 12 in each. It's high in protein, high in fat, high in carbs, high in sodium, so you're getting that salt you need because you're going to lose a lot of it when you sweat. One dollar. And they're super lightweight, thin. I mean, you can't go wrong. And then I've got, um, this is a hot beverage drink bag. And what you do is you stick one of these in one of these uh, MRE ready-to-eat heaters. So... Basically, you just fill it with some water, and the nice thing is it doesn't have to be clean water. You don't have to waste your filtered water. Basically, the water just goes in there to heat it, and it heats this pack in here, and then you put whatever contents you want in there to heat it up. You put it in the package in the bag. So you would put this hot beverage thing with whatever beverage you want. I've got instant coffee, instant tea, creamer, sugar, Salt, which salt is great to help boil water quicker when you're trying to cook over a fire. And some emergency, some extra vitamins and minerals. So I've got one, two, three, four of these instant heaters. They're a one-time use, but I've got four of them. And I think only one of the meals I have in here needs to be heated up. So you can have coffee in the morning, tea, whatever you want. 
All right, so that is it for my food. That is plenty. It's well balanced. You're gonna get everything you need, you know, for a short period of time. Oops. I just have some plastic silver in here that actually came out of the MREs, but they had slipped out of their little bag, so they're getting stuck. I would like to get some stainless or some of those foldable, you know, sporks with the little serrated knife on the end. I just haven't gotten to that point yet. So that is it for my bag. And something else you guys might want to consider is getting some kind of besides a good pair of weatherproof shoes would be a little bit of cash and small bills. If the grid's down, no one's going to be able to take credit cards. And if the stores, or at least some are open, you might be able to use that or even barter with it for supplies you need. Also, a survival book that gives you ideas of um, not tying, uh, how to start a fire when you don't have the proper items, um, fruits, nuts, flowers you can eat that are edible and safe ways to filter water if for some reason your water filter's not working and you don't have one. I mean there's so many great tips and tricks in there and if you're found your spot for the night and you're just sitting there you're probably going to be stressed out and need to keep yourself busy. So reading this little book, it's like a credit card size, it folds out like a big map, could be super handy. So I definitely recommend that. Uh, another thing I don't have in here yet is identification. It's important to keep identification with you, driver's license, whatever you have, passport, and you might want to also keep copies of yours and your family's social security numbers tucked away somewhere where, you know, it won't, in a plastic bag where it won't get wet. So, uh, again, I'll link all of these items that I talked about today in the description below, and I also have two other videos related to this. One is...